Did I ever tell you about the to the time I, 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 I was with the band uh, Papa Roach, uh, Mike? You know that band? It starts off like this. I guess this is a way to say it. It's easy to make fun of people doing uh, 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 crummy jobs. You know, like people need work. They do something that maybe is beneath them. Easiest thing in the world to, to, to make fun of, to, to kind of zing people for the fact they're doing something that's a little, uh, little uh, beneath their uh, station. But, you know, you got, you, get, you got to put food on the table in life. This just goes for the slobs. Snobs need not apply on this one. The snobs don't have to worry about stuff like that. And you know, before before I had my job, my current job, over at the uh, the Consolidated Cardboard, I was doing a lot of uh, freelance writing, and I would write anything I could get my hands on, any job I could get, any assignment I took it. For like four years, I was doing this, and I, I honestly don't think I said no to a job once in those four years. I'm talking about magazine work, commercials, anything. Anything I could write, yes, I'll do it. People would say, hey, would you write? I would say yes, and then now tell me what it is. I will write it. So I was writing for this basketball magazine. And they call me, they say, hey, will you go do this job? And again, like I just said, I said yes. Now tell me, tell me what it is. So here's what the job was. They wanted an article written on an event that was going to take place over at Chelsea Piers. Jim Beam, you know Jim Beam? The alcohol? They were sponsoring. They had sponsored a contest where the winner of the contest and I'm not making this up. The winner of this contest got to bring three of his or her friends to New York City to play basketball against Papa Roach. I am not lying. I know this sounds insane. This is as true as can be. I did this. This is kind of right. Papa Roach, I at that point, they had put out their big album and they had yet to put out the one after that that bombed that no one wanted. Now, I know you're probably asking yourself right now, Tom, you just said the contest was the winner and three of their friends playing the quartet that is Papa Roach. There's only four guys in Papa Roach, you know, Jacoby Shaddix, Jeremy Horton, Tobin Esperance, and, and Tony uh, Palermo. Although at that point, I think Dave Buckner was their drummer. But neither, neither here nor there. That's four guys. Basketball is five on five. And you're right to say that. Basketball is five on five. So this is what the brain trust that Jim Beam did. They brought in two Harlem Globetrotters to fill out the team. One Harlem Globetrotter on each team. So I show up at these Chelsea Piers outdoor courts. It was, I think it was the spring. It was still not warm out yet. Still kind of chilly, if I remember correctly. And I, I, it slowly dawns on me that I am the only person even remotely resembling the press at this thing. I'm the only one. And these Jim Beam flax, the, the press people for Jim Beam find me, they're all over me. Oh, it's a very exciting event. Oh, it's very great. The guys from Papa Roach are uh, just setting up over. They're just changing over there into their Jim Beam uh, basketball outfits. I'm watching these guys in, in uh, Papa Roach changing into these uh, like basketball jerseys, which only made them look so dumpy. 
these fat guys with tattoos, all short. Guys in Papa, I don't think anybody was over a five four in Papa Roach. They were all kind of built like uh, fire hydrants, putting on these basketball uh, tops that say uh, these sleeveless basketball tops that say Jim Beam on the back. Their tattooed arms coming out, their guts sticking out. So I look over there, these the fatso's in Papa Roach. This is before the game starts. They're loading up on shrimp, if I remember correctly. There, because there's food everywhere at this thing. There's food, and of course, Jim Beam. And what goes better than seafood and uh, hard liquor before uh, before you go play full court basketball? I can't think of anything. Sounds like a perfect plan. Let's all get let's all get hammered and eat seafood that's sitting out in the sun, and then go run and play a sport none of us are any good at. Then I see the contest winner and his three friends, and it's like he's this is not exactly Michael Phelps looking at. These are not exactly Olympic athletes. They're there. It was like two. They, this guy had himself and his wife was the first person he picked, and two of his buddies. So they're all there. So that's the it's the four fatzos from Papa Roach. These four people from the Midwest who were, who were again, were not exactly uh, chiseled. And these two guys from the Harlem Globetrotters who looked like they wanted to jump into the Hudson and drown. So then it's game time. Everybody's wearing their awesome Jim Beam basketball jerseys. They're out on the floor. And at this point, I'm completely embarrassed. I'm the only press person. And they're all looking at me as if I'm gonna, this is going to be on the front page of the New York Times. Jim Beam event. That's the other thing. They kept uh, The Jim Beam person kept saying, you're going to get Jim Beam into the article, of course, right? It's for Jim Beam. You mentioned that it was a Jim Beam event. Jim Beam. Jim Beam, Jim Beam, Jim Beam. This is a kid's basketball magazine. I'm going there knowing, right from the get-go, Jim Beam is not going to be within 100 feet of this article. The name Jim Beam is not going to be in this article in any way, shape, or form. Somebody should have told these Jim Beam people. But they're all asking me about, like, brand coverage and all this stuff. It's insane. So the game starts. And now it's it's readily apparent that no one on the floor, except for the two Harlem Globetrotters, have any idea how to play basketball. And it's a game they... they, Playing a 15... Might as well have been playing a 1500. Nobody could make a basket. And at a point, you look around all the Jim Beam people, they don't want to be there either. No one wants to be here. Everyone at this event wishes they were somewhere else. The guys in Papa Roach don't want to be there. These four contest these contest winners would rather be checking New York out, not actually forced to play basketball. These two guys in the Harlem Globetrotters definitely don't want to be there. None of the press people want This was a Sunday. No one wants to be here. But we're all here watching these people struggle to score 15 points. And at a point, I think everybody was just wishing that these Harlem Globetrotter guys would just start scoring. But these guys are passing the ball. They're trying to make it inclusive. I'm like, yeah, they'll take, they'll take the ball. They'll take the ball, they'll pass it. They're passing it to this guy who, who tries to put up a layup and misses the entire backboard. Oh, just start scoring, Harlem Globetrotters. Please end this. Watching these these uh, these uh, tubs in uh, in Papa Roach trying to score. These guys have no interest in basketball. 
Then finally, this game ends. Finally, it ends. And now, I got to go interview the guys from Papa Roach who are soaking wet with sweat from having done the most strenuous physical activity they've ever done in their lives, running back and forth on a basketball court. I've got to go interview these guys, who I can't stand also. Some of the worst music I've ever heard in my life. So I go up to the one guy. Hey, uh... Hey, I'm here uh, doing an article on this. And I'm embarrassed now. Because what am I wearing? Oh, around my neck, I'm wearing a laminate. Like Jim Beam. There was no one There was no one trying to sneak into this thing. It wasn't like, let's see your lammy. You got clearance? No one wanted to get in. People wanted to get out. So I got this thing. I go up to these, these guys in Papa Roach. I'm talking, hey, can I talk to you about uh, the, this event? Sure, dude. On the, and then I got one of the greatest answers I've ever gotten to anything I've ever asked in any capacity in my entire life. So why are you uh, doing this event? Is this a fun thing for you to do? What, what made you do this event? So one guy goes, Jim Beam, dude. I can still hear it echoing in my head the way, Jim Beam, dude. So I, I talked to the, I got a couple quotes from those guys. Outside of Jim Beam, dude. I see the Harlem Globetrotters. I figure I'll go talk to those guys. I, I, I'm looking at their back. They're getting out of there as fast as possible. They've already changed out of the dumb Jim Beam jersey. They're just walking out. This isn't it, though. This is not where it ends. The people at Jim Beam created like a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory endless day. Now we move to Madison Square Garden, the mecca of basketball, where the New York Liberty had just played earlier. And I've got to go there to watch the four contest winners. Now the guys in Papa Roach are gone. They 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 hit the highway with with the the 10 grand they probably got to do this stupid thing or whatever they got and all the Jim Beam they could drink but now it's me and the four contest winners going to Madison Square Garden to be trained by Walt Clyde Frazier New York Knicks legend in basketball drills And I had to sit there for a half hour watching these people who could barely dribble a basketball trying to go between cones with Walt Frazier. This guy's a legend. Game 7, uh, 1970 finals, Walt Frazier. Everybody talks about Willis Reed. Walt Frazier's the one who dropped all the points on. He's the one who won the game. Walt Frazier went bananas that game. All the points, assists, rebounds. He won it. This guy's got to stand there and watch these these dummies trying to dribble a basketball uh, through through cones. He's trying to teach him how to move, do defense, move from left to right, shuffle your feet, stay in front of your defense. These people now these people want to go home. Like, well, what did I win? A contest, or am I in some sort of uh, some uh, some sort of fitness camp? Now, all of a sudden, then I have to talk to Walt Clyde Frazier about this event, and he thankfully was a complete gentleman. And pretended to have interest, to pretended to be interested in this event, when he was interested in the fifteen thousand dollars they probably gave him 
to spend his afternoon at Madison Square Garden. And then I got to go. I was on the floor. I got to go on the floor of the garden. And I got to shoot uh, baskets while waiting for this day to end. Oh, Papa Roach. Where are where are they now? Where are the guys from Papa Roach now? So do you think, Mike, if uh, Ringo Starr died, the other three would do shows? We miss you, buddy. They put his face up on the screen as they did... Uh, with a little help from my friends. Be like, we miss you, Ringo. Then all of a sudden, hey, Jude, Ringo who? Like everybody just forgets as the next Beatles hit starts playing.